today I am going to share with you a story. It's the story of Massimo Corporation. Uh, it started in 1989 by two immigrants, one from Iran, my partner, I myself from Syria. Today Massimo uh, put the food on the tables of 5,000 families, which means we have nearly 5,000 employees. And it all started really humble start. And it's impossible to compress the journey of 34 years and going in 10 minutes. But I'm going to share with you some of the lessons learned that I think are universally applicable to anyone who wants to start a company. And perhaps some funny stories, if time permits. So what do you need to succeed? First, you got to start with an unmet need out there. There has to be unmet need out there. You start with that and you find a solution for it. And uh, for us, the need that we started with is uh, in pulse oximeters. I think many of you, after COVID, you've learned that little thing that you put on a digit and it turns red and gives you your oxygenation. Well, those at the time uh, had a problem, major problem. The moment the patient moves, loses a signal, alarms, the nurse comes, find out that it's a false alarm. They turn the alarm off and they go. And eventually, it becomes like a crying wolf story. They just don't believe it. And when they need it, there is a real, real alarm, they ignore it. And one doctor said the pulse oximeter at that time were a fair weather friend. You know, when, when the weather is good, it gives you numbers, but when you really need it, it's not there to be. So our challenge at the time was to solve this particular problem. We call it the motion artifact problem. As well as other problems, call them low perfusion when the patient is in shock, the blood at the periphery is very small and they don't work. And at the time when we started, the challenge was how to apply these new ideas, neural networks, which is really the foundation of AI, as well as adaptive signal processing to this problem. And there was nowhere in a book or in a article how to do that. So it was, that was the challenge that we took on when we started. The next one point is you have to be obsessed with your goals. I mean, this is, this is a startup. Unless you are obsessed, it's not going to happen. Part-time doesn't work. You got to be obsessed with the goal, and you got to dedicate your time and to achieve the goal. The third point I would like to bring is that you got to build a team, a like-minded team. This is so critical, because one hand can't climb. It cannot clap. You need a team to achieve something out there in life, even if you have the best idea. That's not good enough. So this, this, this one is very important. Now, the next slide, the next point, actually, I left it for a complete slide because it is so important. And that is, get the right partner. And what you see right here is my dear friend, Joe Chiani. He's the founder of Massimo, and I joined him a few months later. Joe has the technical background, just like me, he's an engineer, but also he has business acumen. He has the vision. He knew what to do. He knew the future. He knew how to stay the course when things were so rough and tough. It took Massimo about 11 years to be in the black. In other words, we start making money. 11 long, long years. And Joe was the partner, the right partner. There was synergy between us. He deferred to me in a technical part, I deferred to him on the business part, and we worked perfectly. I cannot tell you how many stories I heard about companies that completely self-destructed because the partners, in fighting in between the partners. You need to have a vision for the company and a mission, very important. This is, this is not something artificial you put on the walls of the company. You got to have a vision. It sets the tone, it sets the culture. When you have, you have these guiding principles, the vision and the mission, and if those meshes with the founder's behavior, it establish some kind of an immune system to the company. This is a culture within the company. We, people who do not fit, they leave very quickly. I remember a story where some engineer joined us, and he resigned in 48 hours. 48 hours. He's the fastest one to resign. He just could not fit. 
And it's not because he was a bad engineer, it's just there is no fit. So this is very important. Third point, do not get intimidated by the competition size. I recall in 1989, my, Massimo was actually in my bedroom. That's all I got, I didn't even have a garage. There was my bedroom. My roommate comes in and he said, Mohammed, what are you doing with you and Joe? I said, well, we're building pulse oximeter and I think we, it will work under motion. Explained to him, he said, well, what's pulse oximeter? Well, sit down, let me show you. He sat down, put the sensor clip on his head, turned on, signal showed up, heartbeat, pulse rate, saturation. He said, wow, great. He said, do you have competition? I said, well, yes, we do, but they don't have the idea we have. He said, well, how big they are? I said, well, in Elcor, it's like a thousand employees. He looked at me and said, a thousand employees? And you and Joe think you want to compete from the bedroom? He put the sensor on the table, I still remember to today, and he said, Mohammed, you and Joe are a couple of idiots. <laughs> I remember this still today. So don't get intimidated, because this is the domain of ideas. Even in the 10,000 people company, not 10,000 people create ideas. There are a few who create the ideas and you build the company around those ideas. So that's, fourth point is perseverance. And I put it three times because our history at Massimo was a history of going through one light mine after another. We finished one light mine, they say, oh, here's another one you have to cross. I thought initially, oh, it's a technical challenge. Okay, well, we met the challenge. We got the ideas. Not good enough. There is a challenge in raising money. There is a challenge in hiring employees. There is a business challenge. There is barriers that were erected in front of us that prevented us from even accessing the a major fraction of the US market. Those were challenges one after the other. And I can tell you many times where I was ready to give up. 10 years of hard work and still this company stole our patents and we still have to fight. And I remember one story one time where one of the competitors offered a small amount and we said, we buy you. And we were so exhausted. And I mean truly exhausted psychologically and physically after 10, 11 years. I was telling Joe, what do you think we take the offer? He said, Mohammed, no, they want to buy it and dump it. We don't, we don't get our goals. Our goal is to go and make a difference in the life of the patient. This doesn't do it. He said, have you seen the movie Braveheart? I said, it, it was, this is 2000, so it, Braveheart came up in 1995. And it's a story about uh, a, a uh, warrior uh, from Scotland who, who fought the English and basically eventually was captured and killed, but he stayed the course. I said, Joe, no, I did not see the movie. He said, well, go to Blockbuster and rent it. There was no streaming movie at the time. You go to Blockbuster, you rent a video. And I saw the movie, and it was a really moving movie. And I know we have in our history in the Middle East the same stories where somebody rose up, fought for his country, for his people, and died in the process. And the next day I went to Joe, I said, okay, we keep fighting. <laughs> All right, so now we talk about our simple humble strat. This is a picture of me in my lab. I'm just gonna get out of here so we could see it. So this is my lab area, and that's on the right is really the, uh, the first prototype that we have built. It's all wire wrap. For those of you who are old enough, they would know this is a clone, PC clone. <laughs> we couldn't afford an IBM PC, so we got a PC clone right there. And that is actually the prototype who my, who my uh, roommate, I put it on and I said, okay, let me show you what it is. And uh, here's another one. It's okay to have a humble start. This is, this is where I could sleep. I couldn't get a bed. There is no bed for me. There was two futons. <laughs> On the floor, I probably bought them from Jemco. I don't remember what said. There was no Costco at the time. Uh, but, but it's okay. It's okay to have a humble start. Perfectly okay. All right. This is my dearest picture <laughs> because this is the one where I had the first proof that the concept works. Because when we started, as I mentioned earlier, that this adaptive signal processing and neural network were there, but nobody knows how to apply it. And it took about a year and a half of hard work 
to get to this. And what you see right here, just very quickly, this is, this is a normal heartbeat that we see. We use two LEDs. You see the red one usually on the pulse oximeter, but there is an infrared one and those two. And here in the middle, what happened when the patient, just a slight movement. It's just the whole signal got corrupted. And you just don't know how the patient is going to move. And what you see right here, I don't know if it's uh, clear to the rest of you, this is the result of this adaptive signal processing that I worked on for about a year and a half. And this is the first time we got the result that we got the signal back cleaned up from all of those, although we didn't know what the signal is. And that was really the difficulty. So I, one of the things that I would recommend to anyone who wants to do something technical like that, don't rush and start writing code. First, start with a mathematical model. It's very critical to start with a model for your system. You work on the model, you test it against the data, and you iterate. Some people rush to go and start writing code. Where it doesn't work. You can just cannot go to even ChatGPT today and say, solve motion artifact for me. It cannot. <laughs> it's not at that level. <laughs> so you got to start mathematical model and work your way from there. The next one would be the uh, w today. This is what Massimo had, was actually other speakers showed. We have multiple engines, and we, 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 we compare and choose between them. This is what Massimo product today, some of Massimo product from that humble beginning. This is just some of the product we have, all, multi all monitor, all non-invasive monitor. This is also, we have a consumer product. We have some uh, even watches <laughs> that can measure truly blood oxygen saturation. And this is the future. We think the next challenge would be the home health monitoring. And AI is going to be critical for that, absolutely critical for that monitoring. Okay, thank you very much.